Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Rampant Design Tools, and I'm back again with another tutorial, and this time we're talking about working with Flare Essentials inside of DaVinci Resolve. Now, if you follow along with my tutorials, you know that when I do these type of lessons, I always like to try to change things up a little bit, and this lesson is no exception. In this lesson, I'm not just going to show you how to work with these elements inside of Resolve. We're going to take it to the next level and I'm going to show you how to work with these elements inside of Fusion inside of Resolve. Fusion is a fantastic free tool that you can utilize along with Resolve to do all of your high-end compositing work. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you're going to be able to get in and create this composite that you see in front of you in no time flat. All right, now a couple of things I want to talk about before we get started with the tutorial. The first is that if you're new to Rampant Design Tools and you're really not sure if these elements are right for you, what I encourage you to do is to head on over to 4kfree.com. Sign up for the Rampant Design Tools newsletter and you're going to get access to a ton, over 100 Rampant Design Tools elements that you'll be able to download absolutely free for you to work with in your projects, which is really going to give you a feel for how great these elements are. And again, it doesn't cost you a penny. That's 4kfree.com. Head on over now and sign up. You'll get the newsletter and you'll get emails for great deals on Rampant Design Tools products. Now, the other thing that I want to remind you of is that if you don't know this already, you're definitely going to want to check out the Rampant Previewer app that you can download on the Apple App Store. This preview app is going to let you get in and get a preview of all of these great elements right on your iOS device without having to go through each element manually on your computer. This fantastic tool is absolutely free and it's under 10 megabytes. You'll have this app downloaded in no time and you'll be able to check out any one of the Rampant Design Tools elements anywhere that Wi-Fi is available. All right, so let's Command or Alt and Tab into DaVinci Resolve. And as you can see, we have our base clip in our timeline. And as always, I want to give a big thanks to Artbeats for the use of this clip in our tutorial. If you want to check out this clip, plus many more awesome clips, you can head on over and check them out at artbeats.com. All right, now, you might think that we're going to get in and start, you know, importing rampant design tools, elements, and things like that, but we're actually not going to do any of that. We're going to save all of that for inside of Fusion. So what we're going to do is we're going to right-click on our clip. We're going to navigate up to New Fusion Connect Clip. Now, we're going to be asked to give this clip a name. I'm going to call this Waterfall Rampant Design Tools Composite. The format's going to be QuickTime. The codec is going to be ProRes 422HQ because keep in mind that when we're done working in Fusion, we're going to render this clip out to a location on my computer, and that clip is then going to replace the Fusion clip that's in my timeline. We're going to leave both these options checked. Use Source Media for Fusion Connect Clip and Open Fusion Connect Clip, and we're going to say Create. You'll notice quickly down here at the bottom that the clip has now switched over to be that waterfall rampant design tools composite clip. And once Fusion opens, what we're basically going to have is the clip that's in our timeline that's directly connected to a saver node. This is what's going to render out the clip for us to use inside of our Resolve project. All right, now the first thing that I need is that waterfalls text that we had that you saw in the original animation. And I'm just gonna disconnect the waterfall node from our saver node. And I'm gonna use a loader node that you can find right up here at the top toolbar. And let me bring in our clip. I'm gonna come to the desktop. I'm gonna come to my waterfall elements. I'm gonna come into the waterfalls. And I'm gonna select the target sequence. I'm just gonna say open. Now what I'm also gonna do here is I'm just gonna delete the merge node that was automatically added because I want to show you exactly what is going on with our composites. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to zoom in on this just so it's a little bit easier to see. Now, if you want to be able to zoom in easily inside of Fusion, you can simply hold Command or Control on the keyboard to zoom in. Okay. Now, at any point, if I want to see exactly what's going on with these clips, I can call up a clip in the left viewer by simply clicking on the left viewer option right here and we could switch that over to the right viewer as well by clicking on the right viewer option now what i actually want to do here is just to see the waterfalls there and you'll see that i could switch that up with the background if i wanted to let's now get in and let's merge these two elements together 
What we're going to do is we're going to head up to our tools. I'm going to come down to the composite option and I'm going to choose the merge node. Now you can also find the merge node right along the top toolbar right here. I'm just going to select merge and it's been automatically connected to one of our clips. But the question is, what exactly are we connecting to here? Well, if at any point you hover over any of these nodes, you're going to notice that Fusion is going to tell me exactly what these nodes do. Now, because the waterfall is the background, we're going to connect that to the background node. Because our text is the foreground, we're going to connect that to the foreground node. We're going to not connect our merge node to the saver just yet. We're going to save that till the end. But what we now have, if we call up the merge node on the right monitor, is these two elements merged together. Okay, now I'm going to save our overall flare for the end because I want to add a flare right over top of it. Maybe we'll add it over the A. Okay, and to do that, what we're going to do again is we're going to go back to our loader node. I'm going to come to my media drive, to my rampant design tools folder. I'm going to come to my sci-fi flares, and I believe I was using flare number seven. So I'm going to call up flare number seven, and I'm going to say open. You'll see there's the flare right there. And let's call it up in the left viewer here. There we go. Now, I don't think that was actually the one that I wanted. Now, if it's not the correct flare that you've brought in, don't worry. What you can always do is just browse to the correct one, which I believe was eight. I always get them confused. There we go. This is more the flare I was looking for because the color scheme more matches the color scheme of the entire shot, more specifically of the waterfalls text. Now, once we have the element inside of Fusion, we're going to again create another merge node. Let's just do that. And this is actually going into the wrong node. We don't want it in the background. I'm just going to disconnect. What we want to do is we want to add this merge node as the background. This one is going to be the foreground. And once we do, you're going to notice that if I call this up on the right viewer, the only thing that I see is the lens flare because we need to get in and add this merge node as a composite over top of the original merge. To do that, it's very simple. We're just gonna switch the apply mode here from normal to screen, and there we go. Now, here's what's cool about working inside of Fusion. If at any point you wanna make some adjustments, let's say I wanna get in and make this element a little bit smaller. What we can do is with a node selected, we can come back up to our tools, and I'm gonna come down to transform, I'm just going to choose a scale node and what we can now do is take this element and scale it down to whatever size we need it to be. Now once I've done that I want to set this flare up to do a little bit of an animation. So again back to tools, back down to transform. We're going to do a DVE effect. Now I'm going to take our DVE effect and we're just going to place our flare directly over top of the letter A here. Now let's make sure we're at the start of our composition, which we are, and I'm gonna come up to the center parameter. I'm gonna right click and we're just gonna say animate. Now I'm just gonna make sure that I got this exactly the way that I want, which I do. I'm gonna come down to the end of our composite now and I'm just gonna adjust the end position to be about there. And I'm just being approximate when I'm doing this, but you're gonna see that what's now happened is, is this parameter has now been animated over time. Okay, so we're almost done. Let me just bring my node south a little bit because I need to add one more node here. So let's go back to our loader. Let's step up a level. Let's come into our natural flares. And I believe it was natural flare number seven. And let's just double check here. Perfect. You can see that we got sort of the blue look of this flare going with the blue look of our waterfall shot here. And let's now take another merge node and we're going to add it in again by simply using the shortcut on the toolbar. There we go. And let's just disconnect this. We're going to connect the previous merge to here. We're going to connect our new flare. We want to just check that out in the viewer. Now, again, this flare is, of course, sized a little bit too big for what we needed to do. But again, we need to see exactly what we're doing. Let's switch our apply mode to be screen. Let's get in. Let's add a scale node here. We're going to come to tools, transform scale, and we're just going to scale this element right down. Okay. Now, I just want to make sure that I haven't scaled it down too small. So let's just take this and we'll put this at 50% here. Just because I want to make sure that you can see that when I scale it down a little bit too far, you can see a line that's going to go across the screen. I think we need to put that up just a little bit more. Perfect. Now, if I wanted to get in and adjust the position of this element, we could do that as well. Again, we're going to do the exact same thing. Tools, Transform, DVE. We can now reposition this element. So if we decided we wanted to be a little bit brighter over there on the left, we could, or 
we can just have it a little bit more subtle over here on the right. And I think I like this the best. I'm pretty much happy with the way that this composite looks. Now there's one important last step that you need to remember, and that's to take this merge node and reconnect it to the saver. Once you've done that, we're now ready to render this element out. I'm gonna do that by navigating down here to render, and I'm gonna let this go, and once it's done, we're gonna be back, and I'm gonna show you the end result. All right, as you can see, our render's done. Let's now come down, say okay, let's quit out of Fusion. We're just gonna say yes. And it doesn't appear as though anything has happened inside of our timeline until we actually click so that Resolve will update. And you can now see that we have our composite in our timeline. But that does beg the question, we did render that out of Fusion back into Resolve, but what happens if I need to make a change? No problem, all you have to do is simply right click, come back up to Fusion Connect, say open in Fusion, and of course the composite you had created before with all of your nodes is still there so you can get in maybe you wanted to change up your flare maybe you wanted to change up the flare that we have on top of the text no problem you can change all that reprocess your file and it will appear back in fusion just like we had just done before so i hope this tutorial has shown you that whether you decide you like to work natively inside of resolve or whether you want to take it to the next level and start compositing inside of fusion these rampant design tools elements are flexible and you can work the way that you need to work every time.